Bandwidth is measured by how many bits a device is allowed to send or receive in a given second. It ranges from your internal network card all the way to your ISP, the internet service provider, internet speed, the, or the plan that you have picked, right? In this video, we'll discuss the definition of the bandwidth upload versus the download speed, or is it sometimes called the outgoing versus the incoming uh, traffic. The different, we're gonna discuss the different usage patterns for normal web browsing, streaming, gaming, media production, and the cloud web servers. What do those businesses or different use cases use as download versus upload bandwidth, okay? And finally, we're gonna show you an example, hopefully. With that said, let's just jump into the video. Guys, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein, and in this channel, we discuss all sorts of software engineering videos by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing and check out the other content in this channel. That's it, let's just jump into the video. Here's what we're gonna discuss in this video, guys. So the first thing we're gonna discuss, guys, is the bandwidth, download, and upload speeds. So what's the difference between the download versus upload or the uh, incoming versus the outgoing traffic? So we're gonna discuss that. Then we're gonna discuss the user user or the usage patterns of these bandwidth. So really, uh, users have different patterns and each pattern will have different use cases. And um, based on that, we're gonna have different download versus upload uh, bandwidth, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna finish up with an example and then we're gonna summarize the whole thing. Let's just jump into the video, guys. So if your ISP, right? So this is like a small setup showing you that uh, here's the internet with a huge mesh network of connected switches and uh, computers. And this is the server that you, for example, you wanna communicate with and that's you. And there's obviously, and you have a lot of the devices, right? Uh, obviously, you're gonna have a router, and you have a lot of devices that sits behind the router. And what 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 your ISP will tell you is, hey, you have let's say a plan of 80 megabit per second download uh, speed or bandwidth. So what does that mean? So 80 megabit per second means you can download you are allowed to receive specifically right here okay you can allow to receive 80 megabit in a given second and no more than that that's your upper bandwidth and that's it right so that that is equivalent if you just divide by 8 a byte is 8 bit so that's equivalent to 10 megabyte per second okay a lot of people think of it as like file, downloading a file so right in a given second you can that's the maximum right doesn't mean you have to saturate it but that's the maximum you're allowed to receive okay that's what download bandwidth means okay and this is usually here it really depends on the your your wiring your cabling here if you have a fiber connection you can support more but the, your isp essentially throttles you to to only allow, you can kind of think of it like they're squeezing the pipe of things that is uh, coming in your way. So you only receive 80 megabit per second. So if you pay more, if you pay more essentially, you're gonna get more and then so on, okay? So if they told you like, hey, you have one megabit per second upload or outgoing traffic, that means your outgoing traffic, you're allowed to send to, to uh, to transfer out of your computer, out of your network, this pipe, a total of 125 kilobyte per second. That's a little bit low, but it's just uh, determine that your use cases essentially. So that's the that's how much data is allowed to leave your your network, and that's it. If they as again, if you exceed that, things have to wait here. Packets have to wait, and so on. Sa same thing with the download. If you exceed that there will be some congestion here, right, uh, on your network, and they will, the rest of the things will just flow normally, okay? We're gonna talk about congestion in a minute, but that's essentially the difference between download, upload, or incoming versus outgoing, okay? So let's talk about the usage patterns, guys, about um, what is really, what are the different users and uh, uh, for the internet, essentially, right? Most, users of the internet download far more than they upload, right? You stream Netflix, you 
watch Instagram, right? You're just swiping through things. You watch YouTube videos, right? You browse the web. So there is a lot of data incoming to you, but not much actually leaving your computer, right? But that actually can differ based on your use case, and that's what we're going to discuss here. So the first use case is normal web browsing. Nobody actually does just that anymore, right? So this is this is essentially yeah, you you make a get request HTTP get request to a site, you the server received it, and then gives you back the index HTML, CSS, some JavaScript files, and maybe some images, right? So still. Right, so you can see that uh, making a simple get request is a little bit. It's it's it, it doesn't exceed few kilobytes, right? It's, it's like it's it's, it's maybe it's a fifty kilobytes, right? I don't really know the sizes of that, but it's a very small request, and the download side of this is also relatively small. You're receiving images. I mean, you're not. It depends really if you're browsing high res images but essentially most web pages are compressed so you're going to receive images you're going to see some text some html and that's it right so a little bit more download than the upload so you can see that here essentially you a little bit upload the upload bandwidth you just a little bit of it but the download you need is slightly more than your upload essentially to receive a decent web browsing so so that's the idea of web browsing so that's the usage okay so blue is upload Red is download. Okay, the second thing is actually interesting: gaming, right? And uh, gaming is is a very interesting uh, uh, usage pattern because it really depends on the game and the implementation, the underlying architecture of the game. Okay, and uh, if and I'm talking about online gaming, right, guys? Like, like Fortnite, PUBG, uh, Overwatch, these kind of games, right? And it depends really on the architecture of the game. How is it implemented? Some games, right, uh, there are many uh, approaches to games, but I'm just going to quickly summarize the difference, two different approaches of gaming, uh, multi-gaming online. So there's the server authoritative model where you have, let's say, five players, and what those five players connect to a single server, okay, and what they do is they all send their input. So what does that mean? So it's like, hey, I'm moving upward. I'm shooting at a 90 degree angle. I am now trying to hit this opponent. I am now just jumping. I'm So all these are inputs, right? So all these inputs are received by the server. So you can see how, how big these inputs are. It's just up, down, like aim there. So a little bit, it has a little bit of upload, right? Right, so you're gonna the server receive these, and what the server does is calculate the state, and the state is if if this guy uh, aimed at this guy and start shooting, so uh, like a player A will basically damage player B. So the new state is player B have seventy percent less health, right? Something like that. Okay, it depends on the damage and all that stuff. And start server start calculating all the state changes. I don't know. Some volcano started to erupt and a uh, player C died because uh, he fell down the ledge, right? Or or player C jumped on and all these things. The state will be calculated and shoved down so all the clients now will start downloading this huge state. It's a big it's big. State changes are essentially big, okay? Not that big, but it is, it is large, as you can see, right? Depends on the game. Some games send the full state down. Some games just send the changes, okay? But you can see there are, there are some changes. So you need a little bit upload, a little bit more download speed. Some games are more efficient using the lockstep approach model where all of the uh, all of this uh, clients will only send inputs, but guess what? The server just, just wait receive all the inputs from all the players and then collect all of them and just shove all the input back to the client so it says you you send uh, you send one input the client sends another input and all of this will grouped and then will be the, gr the group of input will be pushed down the client so the client actually essentially calculate the state of, of the game, right? Instead of the server calculating state. So you can see that the upload or downloads now is a little bit less, right? Compared to the first approach. So 
really depends on their gaming. But essentially, that's what I thought. I thought is it again the, all of these things is just made up. I, I just I just based on my research, my personal research, I think this is this is most what gaming really needs most of the time. Obviously, I could be wrong based on the game, right? So upload you you need a decent upload speed, especially like if, you, if, if games have like cloud save you need more upload because you're uploading your save files uh, to the server so you need more upload speed uh, for that case but essentially upload you need decent upload a little bit more download okay but far more than what browsing okay streaming is another case guys we all stream we all watch netflix we all watch uh, amazon prime correct so what happens with streaming is, again, it's a similar concept. You establish a connection, and then you send a request to the services. Hey, server, please. I want to watch The Office episode 9, okay, of season 2, okay? And uh, this will essentially be, I would, I would imagine each episode will have an ID, and that the, server, the client, which is your TV maybe, or a PlayStation, will send the Netflix client will send a request, which is a very tiny ID, could be a 64-bit, and will send that to the server, and the server will respond with a huge stream of data, okay, just incoming data, okay, just coming to you. Obviously, there was some congestion control uh, that is uh, implemented by the server, so that you don't get flooded and you don't break the internet as a result. But as a, as a in general, streaming, a little bit of upload, a lot of download, right? So that's the idea, okay? You need still uploading because you you, you need to be con 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 constant communication with a server, telling it, hey, I'm still alive, I'm still watching. You know the, how Netflix says, are you still watching? Duh, I'm still watching. Okay, because it tells you like if if, if nobody is actually doing any active and you're just playing the next episode after the other, then this person will just say, Okay, should I continue streaming or are you really watching this thing, right? So there's a lot of communication going on. Media production. Okay, so if you run running like a media production or a YouTube channel, for example, and like me, for example, take me an example. I call myself a YouTuber, right? I have a full-time job already, but I do YouTube really, I upload once a week. And that said, I cannot, I don't have bandwidth, bandwidth. <laughs> I don't have bandwidth to actually upload every day, right? Uh, so I don't care if I have like 50 megabit per second upload internet, like uh, front end. that's what I have. And that's, you know, for me, because... I can upload my five uh, gigab uh, gigabyte video file every week and it's gonna take one hour or 40 minutes to upload. I'm happy because I'm gonna upload it and then come later and then just uh, do my thing and edit and all that stuff, right? I'm fine. But people like like channels like T-Series or, or Linus Media Group, like those guys, right? They have, I don't know, seven channels, and each channel they do upload like five videos a day, and each video is like, I don't, I don't know, 200 gig of data, 4K. So those guys cannot afford to wait, right? So if they upload, they better finish their upload in four, four minutes or five minutes, because they're queuing a lot of data upload. So their upload speed is far more than their download speed, okay? Obviously, I just put it, very almost equal to the upload speed because those guys still need to watch videos right okay but if you're a media company right media production company you need a lot of upload speeds essentially and finally web servers or or the cloud provider so we talked about netflix and streaming right so streaming on this other end right you're sending a little bit of data but you're downloading a huge amount of data and netflix which is running on amazon by the way okay it is exactly flipped guys those guys upload a lot of data because the outgoing traffic from netflix from amazon servers to you is a lot right because they're just uploading 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 it's just maybe uploading is on right war here but the outgoing bandwidth is so big for this download is a little bit i i, I hesitated to be to make it a little bit smaller than that but i i believe it's much more smaller than that essentially right because and uh, the download the incoming traffic is not much especially for external i'm, I'm talking about external 
uh, services, right? I'm not talking about the internal cloud provider because yes, in, internally in the cloud there is you know S3 and you're just saving. Uh, there is a lot of microservices chatting with each other. So I would imagine the down the incoming and outgoing a little bit. Maybe it's a similar. Okay, again, guys, if you know more than this, please feel free to correct me in the comment section. I would love to right, have a, just discussion, and, and this is really good right, to have discussion. Uh, let's talk about an example, guys, here. And uh, this is a, this is going to end the video, hopefully. So let's say I have an 80 megabit per second download, which is like around 10 megabyte per second, uh, right? So, and the upload is 125 kilobyte per second that's a little bit low right but let's say your server that you're communicating with is has like a whopping 80 gigabit per second download which if you divide by eight it's around 10 gigabyte per second okay and the upload speed is 80 gigabit per second so what you would think is let's say i am going to uh, make a git request okay to download not a stream i want to explain streaming is a little bit different i want to actually do a, an old uh, an old school download of a file right okay and let's say this file is around 60 gigabyte file right so I'm, i don't know what i'm downloading maybe a movie it could be anything else right 60 gigabyte if you do the math this server have the file and since it receives a request to download this file it is really a request to upload right so the server is going to upload it's going to send this data Okay, so what is the upload speed of the server? The upload speed is the blue one, right? It is 10 gigabyte per second. So the server can theoretically send this data in six seconds, correct? 10, 10, 10, 10, each second, 10 gigabyte, poof, 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 six, time, six seconds, and that's it, it's done, okay, right? It's going to take six seconds for the server to just poof, poof, slam through all of this. Obviously, there's some latency is going to be here, all right? And it's going to get stuck in the ISP. And this ISP says, wait a second, this guy, whatever is going through it, this guy doesn't have a 10 gigabyte per second bandwidth. So hold your horses, all right? So it's going to take this guy to download this whopping 60 gigabyte, 1.5 hours to download all this data okay because if you do the math 10 megabyte i think i did the math right maybe i'm wrong but i think it's going to take you 1.5 hours to download this thing okay now before you scream at me i know this is not how the internet works right if we did this in real life the internet will shut down immediately <laughs> because this oops this right here guys it will become the 405 at 2 p.m. at a workday. And if any of you have been to Los Angeles, you know what I'm talking about. The traffic here will be insane, guys, because all of these packets that's been sent, the poor ISP or even the internet will, will, will clog all the pipes all here because this guy is not processing this request fast enough. They can't possibly process 60 gigabyte per second right assuming we're you if you're using tcp to establish this connection tcp have a beautiful feature called congestion let me pronounce it right congestion control right i'm gonna i told i'm gonna reference a video here tcp versus udp we talked about the benefits versus pros and cons versus tcp and udp right you tcp really smart protocol it sends it, it, it tests the receiver it says okay i can listen to you I don't know, take this one meg. Just let me taste you a little bit, okay? And then the server will just like, and still will wait, okay? Uh, oh, you're good. You you really ate that one megabit in less than a second. Okay, I'm gonna increase that thing. You're gonna start sending more and more and more and more until the server start, the receiver in says, ooh, oh, this guy starts to slow down. I better not send all this traffic. Okay, I'll better wait. The server will just wait. So it will not theoretically be six seconds to send all this data. The server will wait until the, it receives acknowledgement from the, uh, from the receiver, which is you, that you actually receive this fast enough. So it will, it will essentially implement this uh, uh, traffic control or, or you can say traffic management or 
congestion control, right? So it will start to just a little bit stream some of this data. That's why streaming came into the picture because streaming chops down the, the data into smaller manageable bytes that you just can stream on demand. So that's the, how TCP works. If you're using UDP, then it's, it's the wild west. UDP doesn't have congestion control, then this scenario is accurate because if you're using UDP and you have an open UDP here, I mean, God be with you, right? And a lot of people, companies just block UDP because of this congestion control, right? You cannot shove this data because the, the, U, the ISPs will just die and the internet will just die if you keep using UDP and uh, streaming a lot of data, okay? Because UDP doesn't wait. It was just, hey, my bandwidth is good. We'll just run with it. We'll just upload or just send the 60 gigabit all over, okay? And we talked about UDB and TCP. I'm not gonna talk more about it, okay? All right, guys, hope that makes sense, right, guys? So a little bit changed. So this, don't take these numbers seriously, right? But you, I hope you get, have an idea of how bandwidth going, at, outgoing and incoming bandwidth were. And if I say something wrong, please correct me, and that I would love to be corrected if I, if I said anything wrong, okay? I'd love to hear from it. I am a software engineer at the end, Right? If there are network engineer out there, they say, oh, what is this guy talking about? Oh, this is bullshit. Right? So I'd love to be corrected. Okay? But that's my experience as a software engineer. Bandwidth, download, and upload speed. So that's the summary. That's what we're going to discuss. Let's go through it a little bit quick. Okay? Bandwidth, download. We talked about the download versus the upload. What's the difference between this? There's the incoming traffic versus the outgoing traffic. We talked about the user pattern. We talked about web browsing, gaming, streaming, media production, and cloud providers. And what is the usage patterns of the bandwidth for all of these guys? We talked about an example here. And finally, we summarized the whole thing. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and share it with your friends and maybe subscribe, right? And hit that notification bell if you are interested to see more of these software engineering videos dive in all right i'm gonna see you in the next one check out the other content of the channel i can see you see you in the next one guys you guys stay awesome